We are back with you live on CIF North Coast Star TV. A packed house here at McKeon Pavilion for this Division Three Boys Championship game between the number one seed Bishop O'Dowd Dragons of Oakland and the number two Campbellindo Cougars of Moraga. It's going to be loud in here tonight, Harold Mills. What a game we have on tap. What a game. It's going to be exciting. We have a college-type atmosphere in yes, here. Sir. It's going to be remarkable. I am definitely excited to see this game. This is the biggest crowd of the weekend by a mile, and the Campolindo fans are in full voice and on their feet already as we get ready to contest the tip-off here between Terrence Daniel and Griffin Pyatt here at center court. Ready to start this Division Three Boys Championship game. Here we go, and we're underway. Bishop O'Dowd have it from the tip-off. Here's Kendall Jackson in possession. Dishes out left side to Longrus. Now back to Jackson. Early going here. Ja uh, Longrus to three. Front iron, no good. Rebound, Campolindo. Here's Jack Evans in possession. Quickly to Griffin Pyatt. The MVP off the backboard, no good. Rebound, Bishop O'Dowd kicking it out quickly. Jackson now bringing it down the court to the paint, to the board. No good. Scramble for it. And Harold, I think it's going to be an up-tempo kind of game. You yeah. and I better be paying attention. <laughs> yeah, this game is going to move fast, very fast. Both teams looking like they just want to run here. And we're going to see what, what who, who runs out of gas first is basically what it's going to come down to. Yes, sir. So it's Griffin Pyatt to inbound the ball. Sends it to John Schmitz. Now back to Griffin Pyatt, bringing the ball to midcourt. Seven and a half minutes to go in his first quarter of play. No score yet in the early going. Campolindo now back to Pyatt on the right side. Tend to dish the ball around the perimeter at the moment. Here's a shot from Evans, it's good. Evans sinks the first basket of the night, and that gets the Campolindo fans fired up as they take the early lead. O'Dowd bringing the ball down the court with Kendall Jackson on the right side to Long Russ. In the center to uh, Josh Crumbs, trying to pass that out there to, uh, to Marcus Green, couldn't hold on. Campolindo playing aggressive defense here early, and that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to be very aggressive with this Bishop O'Dowd team because once Bishop O'Dowd starts getting to his rhythm, you're going to see um, a whole lot of different uh, things going on here. They no doubt have the crowd behind them tonight. A partisan crowd here in favor of the Cougars. They want their team to take this seventh North Coast Championship if they can. Here's Jackson now to Crum at the point. Crum back to Jackson, right wing. Trying to drive to the lane. Great moves from Jackson there. Floats one up. No good. Rebound. Long wrist, no good. Trying to contest it here. It goes out of bounds and it will be... Campolindo ball with six minutes and 45 seconds to go. Campolindo's running off a lot of drilling in right now. A lot of adrenaline. Let's see what happens when uh, O'Dowd starts to start the gear here. Here's Griffin Pyatt. This is out. Right over. side. Three ball is in there. Campolindo five point lead. That was Rob Worth getting it on the score sheet for Campolindo. And that's what they're going to need. They're going to need to keep hitting those outside shots. Do not try to run in on O'Dowd. Just keep hitting your outside shots. Hearts pumping all around the key and pavilion here as a chance of defense get loud. Here's Longrus now trying to find an open man. Ball tipped. It uh, gets as far as Marcus Green to the inside. Back to Longrus. Reverse layup is in there and good. Longrus is going to be a key player here in this game for them in that post. He certainly is. Here's a deflected pass turnover and Longrus has it. He'll bring it down the court, right side. Now driving to the lane. Long rust, the floater, no good. Tried to get his own rebound, couldn't come up with it. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be O'Dowd yeah, ball cool. there on the right side. And O'Dowd starting to settle down now, starting to see what they have to do and seeing how Cavalino plays. And this is, <laughs> I tell you what, folks, this game is looking to be an exciting one. It's, well, that's to say the least. Scrappy ball here inside the court as Long rust goes to the ground. It will remain O'Dowd. Ball on the right side, and you think the big key here, Harold, is to take this crowd out of the game as soon as possible. That's what O'Dowd wants to do, because Cavalino, they're in here in by droves, and <laughs> O'Dowd's going to definitely want to take them out. The and there's a shots like that, and that's exactly what they'll do. DJ Daniel there floating that one in. 5-4 the score now. Campolindo still leading the game. Here's Griffin Pyatt bringing the ball down court. Dishes off left side to Jack Evans. Content to send the ball around again. Back to Evans now. Evans floating shot off the backboard. No good, and big collision there between... Griffith Pyatt and Marcus Green. And you get the feeling this is going to be an intense game. We just saw the ferocity of that collision between Green and Pyatt. It's going to be very physical. Bush Modell has the advantage in the paint. They have some tall players on their team. And that's something they can use uh, in this game. 
They've got so much experience, as we mentioned, of course, playing in the state championship game last year, losing to Laverne Lutheran, but the three key components for Bishop O'Dowd is Lumbus jams it home. And Alley you will see a lot of that. These players are going to be jumping out the gym over <laughs> For Odell, they can literally jump out the gym. These guys got some serious hops to do. That's the kind of thing that will silence the crowd with the quickness. The alley -oop from Joshua Crum to Richard Longrus, and no doubt have their first lead of the night with five minutes and 12 seconds to go here in the first period of play. Hey, that, uh, <laughs> that alley-oop was so impressive that some of the Capitolino students was cheering for that. <laughs> for, for that. <laughs> what a nightcap we have for you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on CIF North Coast Star TV. A special shout out to all the fans, all the O'Dowd fans listening to us. Thanks to Carlos Arriaga, the Assistant Athletic Director of Bishop O'Dowd. We had a chance to chat with him before the game and give us some of the inside scoop on the O'Dowd team in particular. So hello to all the fans out there. To everyone else, thanks for joining us as well. Don't go anywhere because this is going to be a tremendous matchup here tonight. Campolindo in possession at the moment with Griffin Pyatt working against Longworth. Dishes out left side to Evans, back to Pyatt and cross court now. Excellent ball. Here's move. Schmitz. Certainly is. Jump shot no good. Longworth with the rebound, bringing it down court. Sends it to uh, to Daniel and Pyatt goes up and over. <laughs> wow, and he and somehow is, got his footing too. And that's definitely going to be an over the back penalty yeah. right there. Um, number four for Old. Dow, who is Terrence Daniel, kind of did the pump fake. Pyatt came in and jumped clear over him and just fell to the ground. And Pyatt, not Pyatt, but excuse me, Terrence Daniel at the free throw line now. How Pyatt didn't do a face plant there, I'll never know. Here's the first free throw from Daniel. Clatters off the rim, no good. Have to calm down here for Terrence Daniel. He yeah. has a pretty good free throw percentage and just has to slow it down and just get these in. He certainly does. That's a good point. Just take an extra second to compose yourself here. You've got the crowd chanting in, in your ears, the sound reverberating through the arena here. Here's Daniel. Second three throw is in there. Now will silence the crowd. 7-5 now O'Dow with the lead with four minutes and 51 seconds to go. Here's Pyatt. We'll set the tone for Campolindo on offense all night. Working against Long Rust. Dishes out far side to John Schmitz, Schmitz working against Crum, this is back outside to Crum, right? Smothering defense. Yes, and sir. there it goes. And here's Jackson with a turnover now. Kendall Jackson driving to the hoop. Sweet touch off the board, no good. Rebound by, uh, by Crum, right, excuse me. He'll give it back to Pyatt. Pyatt forces his way past Jackson. Almost turns over the ball, though, as uh, Green. Forces it out of bounds. Four minutes and 21 seconds to go in his first quarter of play. So it will be Campolindo ball here on the near side as Matt McHugh, the hero against Miramonte with 22 points, will inbound the ball to Jack Evans. Back to McHugh now. Frantic pace to this game to start out. 7-5 here. O'Dowd in the lead. Quick dish from McHugh to find Justin Dunn on the inside to tie this game up at seven. That was excellent ball movement. That's what they had to do. Keep the ball moving around. Wait for the perfect opportunity to open up. Crum to Jackson now. Jackson right side to Longrus. Back to Jackson at the point. Dish it across to Crum. Jackson thought about the shot. Holds on to it. Crum for three is in Drain. there. Drain it. Do not leave him open. He is their three-point specialist, and he will do it every time. Yeah, and he had a good look there, and he didn't make a mistake. Here's Pyatt. Dishes out to Evans. Wide open look. Front iron shot. No good. Rebound by Bishop O'Dowd, and that pass down court from Marcus Green. Too long. Yeah, threw a little too hard there. Marcus Green couldn't get a hold of it. Three minutes and 30 seconds to go in this first quarter of play. Bishop O'Dowd, 10. Campolindo, 7. Here's Evans bringing the ball down the court to Griffin Pyatt now. Pyatt, great pass inside there to Jordan Crumry, who's fouled. And he was definitely all over him. Or to McHugh there, excuse me. It was McHugh the player fouled for Campolindo, so he'll go to the line. You can imagine now for the one time in the evening, you might be able to hear a pin drop in here. <laughs> exactly. So he's going to shoot two. Three minutes and 22 seconds to go. Campolindo trying to chip into this three-point lead that the Dragons hold at the moment. Here's the first shot, and it's in there. Love this crowd of Campolindo. They are really in the student section here. It's just like a college student section. They are into this game. They certainly are on their feet since 
about 10 minutes before the start of the game. Here's the second free throw from McHugh, and it's good. And he's already had an impression on this game. 10-9 now the lead for O'Dowd. Here's Jackson at the point, directing traffic. Out wide to Crum. Now to Longrush, he's over on the far side of the court. Back to Joshua Crum. Longrush for three from the corner, off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound by, uh, by Daniel, can't get a handle on it. And they had the, the clear advantage in the paint there to get these offensive rebounds and great second opportunity shots just in these uh, free throws coming up here. Yeah, Bishop O'Dowd, especially with Long Rush, 6'7", 210, have, as Harold said, do have a clear advantage in the paint. Long, uh, Daniel, excuse me, will step to the line. Daniel is 6'6", himself, a tight end for the Dragon football team as well. He'll sink the first free throw and he'll get a chance to sink the second coming up. And I thought this kid looked familiar. <laughs> familiar yeah, here. yeah, definitely. definitely a Athletic kid all the way around, an excellent football player also. Yes, sir, when you got Dominic Marolio throwing you touchdown passes. Your guy is 6'6", pretty easy to do. Here's uh, Daniel's second uh, three throw coming up. Back iron, no good. Rebound, Griffin Pyatt. He'll bring the call, ball to midcourt now. Three minutes to go. Ten out right side now to Isaac Christian in the game for the first time. Ooh, almost a turnover there, but handled well by Jack Evans. Over to Pyatt, and now to McHugh. McHugh dishes left side. Driving to the hoop and throwing it way too hard. That was Justin Dunn there looking for McHugh, but he put way too much mustard on that pass. Yeah, McHugh just running in thinking he's going to get the short pass. Dunn threw it over his head out of bounds, O'Dowd's ball. So it is indeed O'Dowd's ball. It's 11 9. O'Dowd with two minutes and 45 seconds to go in this first quarter of play. Kendall Jackson brings the ball to the point now. Plays and supports each side. Dishes to Longness in the middle. Now out to. Uh, Wide open, Brandon Royal on the far side. He's looking for Daniel in the paint, couldn't come up with it. Pyatt now in transition, brings the ball down the court, driving to the hoop, spins away. Back to Jack Evans, now to Matt McHugh. McHugh thought about the three ball, gives it to Pyatt, dishes, shot no good, rebound off the glass, playing by McHugh, bodies all over the place. McHugh somehow able to come up with it. Now to Jack Evans, Kevin Evans, oh good dish inside. Drive into the hole again, and it's Justin Dunn. What a play. He'll get fouled as well, and he'll shoot one from the line. Cavalino using great ball movement, excellent ball movement to get around the quickness of this old Dow team. Campolindo tied up at 11, and now Justin Dunn, the Diablo Foothill League honorable mansion, has a chance to put Campolindo in the lead here with two minutes and five seconds to go. Evan Robb coming into the game now. Had five points against Miramonte. He was just one of two from the line. So here he goes. Silence in the gym. First shot. Off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound long, Russ. Out to Jackson now. Two minutes to go in the quarter. Quick distribution here by Bishop O'Dowd. Jackson for threes. Off the rim, no good. Ball goes out of bounds. Remains O'Dowd's ball. As Odell have to kind of slow it down here. Odell's kind of look like they're getting surprised here. Uh, Cavalino is playing some tough defense, in your face defense, and they're not letting Odell breathe. No, they're certainly not. No time for anybody to breathe in here tonight. You can imagine how tense it's going to be in here by the fourth oh. quarter. As, uh, as Ivan Rabb, the freshman, went up for the dunk, couldn't get it home. McHugh gets bundled to the ground. Yeah, should have just went on and went on with the easy layup in there, try to do a little show here, but should have just laid it on in there. Ivan Rapp, the freshman in the game for the first time. Uh, the backup center, he's 6'7 as well. Here's a three ball opportunity for O'Dowd, Ooh. and draining it was Dominic Gomes, the guard. Where in number 15, he's in the game for the first time. He sinks the three ball. O'Dowd up by three here with a minute and a half to go in this first quarter of play. No. Here's Griffin Pyatt now, set in the offense. Kicks it out to Christian Whiteside, back to McHugh. Now to Pyatt again, quick pass in the middle left for Christian, can't get the shot off the board. Rebound, O'Dowd. We'll bring it down court now with Brendan Royal. Out to Kendall Jackson, left side. Back to Royal. Oh, looking for the alley-oop. Longworth is there and he'll take hey. the layup off the glass. <laughs> Ladies, boys for O'Dowd can jump. Like I said, they will be jumping out the gym all night if you let them. <laughs> yeah, they, I have to agree with you there. A minute to go now, no doubt. The biggest lead of the game so far, up 16-11. Here's McHugh driving to the hoop, can't get it to go. Rebound, O'Dowd, cleared out quickly. Look at the transition here now to Gomez. He almost got rejected there. It's a second attempt by O'Dowd. They can't come up with it. Slow. Third attempt for O'Dowd now. <laughs> Richard Lummings down there with the block on uh, Cabalindo, and O'Dowd now in possession have to slow it down to try to get some points in, more points. 
Here's Rab driving along the baseline, can't definitely get it to go. Try to tie rope the baseline there, definitely stepped out of bounds. Uh -huh. So where O'Dowd have had the momentum swing in their favor over this last minute and a half, Rab sets out of bounds. And a chance now for everyone to collect their breath here with 34 seconds to go in his first quarter of play. O'Dowd, as we mentioned, enjoying their biggest lead of the game so far. They're up by five, and Campolindo now would like to have a last chance of scoring here before the end of the first quarter of play. Here's McHugh, three ball shot, no good. And uh, Dunn was right there to get the rebound. Now here's John Schmitz, takes it back to Christian. 14 seconds on the clock. Campolindo gonna have maybe excellent one more chance here. Continued excellent ball movement. Three ball chance, no good. Rebound though, chance in Front and they sink it. That's Christian scoring a crucial two as the buzzer goes at the end of the first quarter of play. A frenetic first quarter here at McKeon Pavilion as Bishop O'Dowd 16, Campolindo 13. And I have to tell you, Bishop O'Dowd is, I mean, uh, Campolindo, they're kind of surprising me here early here. They're playing, came out playing tougher, a lot tougher than what I thought they would. But stay tuned for the CIF North Coast.tv post game show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIF North Coast.tv. And also, if you need a highlight video for your athlete working uh, who is working to earn that four-year scholarship, then you want to contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches the link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruit at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. He's Harold Mills. I'm Stephen Davies. T.C. Wardell, the man behind the computer, punching in the graphics. James Davies, no doubt his hands are hurting from panning the camera so much today. Glad to be with you on CIF North Coast TV. This should be... One heck of a game here at 16-13, no doubt in the lead. And yeah. it's getting hot in here, Harry. Yeah, it definitely is. But, uh, <laughs> All the bodies here in the yeah. house tonight. <laughs> yeah, the temperature has definitely turned up on the court and up here in the stands. <laughs> yes, sir. Here at Campolindo now trailing by three as we begin the second quarter of action. Left side, Campolindo in possession. Look how quickly they spread the ball around the perimeter. Oh, they are closing in quickly. Yeah, they are. No chance for Campolindo to shoot. Finally, they have a chance of draining it. It's John Smith. And these, Cabal these boys on Campolindo can shoot. Yeah, they can. Schmitz at six against uh, Miramonte. And that's a crucial field goal there. Here's Gomez again looking for three. Air ball, rebound, Bishop O'Dowd. Kick back out now to um, Tixada in the game for the first time. And he sinks it home. With the teardrop. Mike Tixada, excellent shot. Another senior in there for Bishop O'Dowd, the 5 foot 11 guard. Was also playing in that state championship game last year for Bishop O'Dowd. They lead by three at the moment here with seven minutes and seven seconds to go in his first half of play. Don't leave him open. Here's Schmitz, three ball no good, ball loose here. Picked up left wing by Christian, he'll send it cross court. Another three ball attempt is well short, and that'll go out of bounds. And that was Matt O'Reilly, the forward, who had 10 points off the bench against Miramonte on Wednesday. So, Not couple sure. <laughs> Okay, here we go. This go down to inbound, inbound the ball on the right side, one of the few pauses in the action here in this first half of the Division Three Boys Championship game. Here's Long Russ out to the left side, back to Tixada now, to Crum on the right side. Crum, thought about, oh, drives to the hoop. Can't get it to four. Great Re move, just couldn't get in the basket, but excellent move. Rebound by Griffin Pyatt. Now out to Rob Worth. Worth back to Pyatt. Pyatt yet to get it on the score sheet tonight. Almost a turnover there as there was a scramble between Pyatt and Daniel for the ball. It goes out of bounds over there on the far side, and it will be O'Dowd possession. So three points the difference here. It's O'Dowd 18, Campolindo 15, with six minutes and 18 seconds remaining in this first half of play. Bishop O'Dowd looking to slow it down here in this second period, try to get their game going here. Joshua Crum in possession. 
Kicks out to Longworth, leading the game with six points. Dishes inside to Daniel in traffic, dispossessed nicely Great there. Defense. Great defense. Came down, collapsed on uh, Terrence Daniel and was able to get the steal. Yeah, three players around him there, nowhere to go. Campolindo quickly down court. Pyatt over to the left side, now to Jack Evans, driving along the baseline, trying to get it inside. That's a worth turnover. Longrus has it. Here's Longrus now mid court. Going one on one, pass outside, somehow able to keep it in bounds, but a turnover. And Campolindo have it. Christian. Ooh, look at Longrus down there, scrapping for the ball. <laughs> yeah, the 6 7 Longrus battling the. 5 for 10, Isaac Christie in there, and Longrus on the ground to regain possession for the Dragons. Five minutes and 40 seconds to go now in this first half of play. And this game is every <laughs> every bit, looking at looking to be every bit of what we thought it would be. Uh, this is truly the number one and number two team here playing today. This is the marquee matchup of the weekend here in the North Coast section. Championship games that were held here at St. Mary's, and you have to wonder if this is, will be on a par with the Salesian St. Mary's game that kicked off our Saturday slate of games here at St. Mary's College in Moraga. Partisan crowd here is Camp Lindo, of course, just down the street. The high school of Moraga, and they have turned out in droves here tonight to cheer on the hometown team. Bishop O'Dowd of Oakland have other ideas, and they currently lead this game by three with five minutes and 40 seconds to go. Bishop O'Dowd to inbound the ball now with Long Russ. He'll dish it off to Jackson. And as Harold said, definitely slowing it down here. A little bit different tempo than we saw in the first quarter. Kicks it out to Crum, left side. Crum to Jackson now. Directing traffic. Back to Crum at the point. Around the perimeter. Six on the shot clock, better hurry this up. Crum along the baseline, inside to Daniel, shot off the boards, and good as the shot clock Jeez. expires. Guy down there at that height and that athleticism, easy turnaround hook shot. 35 seconds used wisely there by Bishop O'Dowd. Now, can Campolindo respond? Three ball is off the rim, no good. Rebound by Bishop O'Dowd. Jackson has it, spins around across midcourt. Jackson trying to buy some time here to allow Long Russ and Daniel to catch up. Four minutes and 48 seconds to go. Out to Longrus now, six points on the day for the senior forward. Over to Crum and now to Jackson. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Jackson wide open, three ball off the rim, no good. Rebound in there by Marcus Green. And that's where the height advantage comes in. And it's in, in height advantage and Odell starting to show some great effort here. And now that they slow the game down here, um, Cabalino has to do something and get their shots to fall or this game is going to get out of hand. And this is the sort of situation where O'Dowd can take advantage of it because they have so many taller players. Yeah, just get, keep getting the rebounds, the offensive boards, that's a big deal. And get those second chance shots and get them to foul you and just make your free throws. And O'Dowd can really take this game over. They, but Cabalino are fighters. They are fighters. They are fighting. They are not uh, intimidated at all by Bishop O'Dowd. And they are showing that. I remember we talked in the first quarter about taking the crowd out of the game. For the most part, they have indeed silenced the crowd, and that's allowed Bishop O'Dowd to conduct the game the way they want to do it. Exactly. Just quiet the crowd down. The student section is thick in here tonight, and they're going to be loud all night. But if you can keep them down and don't let them get into it, then you'll probably keep Cavalindo out of it. Head coaches Doug Vieira and Matt Watson with wise words for the troops as the teams retake the court here with 4 minutes and 28 seconds to go in this first half of play. And we saw in the previous possession how Crum and Jackson would send the ball around the perimeter, biting their time. They were down to about four seconds on the shot clock and an inside dish to Daniel, and he was money off the glass. Now, what can Campolindo do to respond? Trailing by seven, the biggest deficit of the night. Here's a jump shot, floats in and out, no good. Ball comes off the hands of Longrus. It will be O'Dowd ball. A little inbound from the right side. That's been kind of the story of the second quarter. Campolindo have had good looks, Harold, but just haven't been able to capitalize. Just haven't been able to capitalize in, on the O'Dowd mistakes. O'Dowds are making mistakes too, but Campolindo's is not capitalizing, and O'Dowd, they're capitalizing on Campolindo's mistakes. Here's Crum dishing out a wide open three ball attempt. No good. Campolindo right there for the rebound as Worth comes up with it, and now they'll bring it down the court with Griffin Pyatt. Pyatt dishes off to Evans. Now over to Worth, far side. Worth. Back to Evans. And O'Dell just, starting to play that smothering defense. They are in their face now. I was just about to say, they just haven't, they can't get a look at the moment. Here's an inside. And that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> As Longhorns is down there, he tried to turn around for the hook, and Longhorns, long arm of the law, 
<laughs> Here's easy block. <laughs> Here's Crum gets a shove as he goes up to shoot. And it's a personal foul against Camp Lindo. That's now the sixth team foul against the Cougars. So that will send Joshua Crum to the line. And as we mentioned, we talked to Carlos Arriaga uh, before the game. Uh, Harold and I have known him for quite some time. And he gave us a little insight into uh, some of the players here throw down, and Joshua Crum in particular, the player has really stepped it up. His first three throw of the night is good. And of course, after Brandon Ashley left to uh, to go to to, uh, to Finley Prep, they, it required the team to really step up. And Joshua Crum in particular is one of the players that has done so. And he's had a tremendous last few weeks. Yes, yeah, definitely has. Came in, came I'm talking about a clutch player. And come they, in, come up in the last in the last weeks when they needed him the most. And and he's going to continue to play here good tonight also. A nine-point lead now for O'Dowd as Crum sinks both three throws. Three and a half minutes to go in this second quarter of play. And Campolindo now need to get something going on offense ASAP as McHugh can't hold on to the ball. will go out of bounds. He will inbound the ball from the far side. Griffin Pyatt surveying the field. There's an open man there far side. That's Matt O'Reilly, the forward. Long. Riley working against Long Russ. Long Russ with that four inch advantage over. And they are all over Cavalino right yeah, now. Yeah, they really are. Here's O'Reilly, does well to get around Long Russ that time. Kicks it out to McHugh, thought about the shot. McHugh spinning through the lane, just off happen. last second. <laughs> Should have gone for the three ball there. He had a good look. Now, mad scramble on the ground. Bodies all over the place. <laughs> Let and the Ken bodies hit the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and Kendall Jackson, the player, to, uh, to emerge from the pileup. 20 seconds on the shot clock now. Look at O'Dowd. Everyone just catching their breath at the moment. Slowing it down, that's what they have to do. Crowd getting into the game now. Chanting defense. Here's a wide open Jackson for three off the eye and no good. Rebound Campolindo with Jack Evans bringing the ball down the court. Now to Griffin Pyatt. Pyatt drives to the lane off the board. No good, but he's fouled. And Pyatt still yet to get on the scoreboard. And Capilino, these are some tough, tough players. They, these players are tough. They're running right at Odell, not scared to go in on, on Odell's bigs. These, these guys can play. And here's maybe the toughest one of them all, Griffin Pyatt. His first three throw, no good. What a season this guy has had. He's a Diablo Foothill Athletic League MVP in basketball. He's also an all East Bay two-way football selection as well. And those Campolindo Cougar football fans out there will no doubt recount his heroics here in the football season, catching the 36-yard touchdown reception in that state ball game. Fortunately, a loss against Washington Union as he sinks that second three throw. But what a season he had, 38 catches, 865 yards. Griffin Pyatt is having an outstanding season, whether it's football or basketball. He's trimmed the lead to eight now with two minutes and 18 seconds to go in this first half of play. And again, no doubt, slowing it down, Harold. Yeah, that's what they have to do. Odell's just going to play their game and look for the open shots like this one right here, which goes in. Yeah, it does. <laughs> All the favors break or go in the way of the Dragons at the moment as Royal floats that one in. Ten points now the gap. Campolindo bring the ball back down the court. Dishing it around the perimeter at the moment. Here's Christian across to Schmitz. Odell in the beginning of the game trying to Trying to make a statement by dancing right in front of the student section of Capilindo there. And uh, just making a statement there. <laughs> yeah, they, they were trying to play kind of fancy in that opening few minutes, but then they just decided the best way to do is just be physical. Yeah. Just muscle them out of the way. Definitely. Just use your size to your advantage. A minute and a half to go now. Ten-point lead for O'Dowd. Kendall Jackson at the point. Kicks it out left side. Thinking about the shot there was Marcus Green. Back to Jackson, now to, uh, to Gomez. Patient play by O'Dowd here. The floater goes again. Too tall. Too tall indeed. <laughs> That's Ivan Rapp, the uh, freshman center. That's his fourth point of the game. And a player you will hear about for years to come. Yeah, what a future O'Dowd has there with a six foot seven freshman. A minute to go now and a 12 point O'Dowd lead. They're up 28 to 16. Here's Jackson now directing traffic in the paint. And Capilano just has to get back to that energetic ball style of the ball he was playing earlier. But Rapp can't find the target there as his shot comes off the back, off the backboard, goes out of bounds. And you're right, Harold, they just, they do, you're right. They have to get back to that. Yeah, energy. it looks like they've gotten away from that, the physical style of play. They have to be physical with Odell. 
and, uh, and just be in their face and cause frustration for Odell and for what for them to get back into this. And they're not out of it, but before it does get out of hand. But you, you're right about the size advantage that O'Dowd enjoys. The tallest player for Camp Lindo is six foot four Jordan Crumbright, and Bishop O'Dowd have at least three players <laughs> a, a six foot six or taller. So a clear advantage for O'Dowd. Three ball goes over there on the far side. That's John Schmitz. Way to shoot over uh, Evan Robb there. Robb was right in his face and still able to get that, that ball, that was ball actually, there. Great arc. Yeah, that was a long two, excuse us. 20 seconds to go now. Camp Lindo trail or uh, trim the lead to 10. And Doug Vieira calls timeout here for Bishop O'Dowd with 17 seconds to go in this first half of play. Hey, do you want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools and a full curriculum for your students and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. Thank you, sir. CIF North Coast Star TV personnel are as follows. James Davies behind the camera, T.C. Wardell behind the laptop, Harold Mills and Stephen Davies behind the microphone. 17.7 seconds to go here in this first half of play. And after a competitive first quarter, O'Dowd have really started imposing their will on this game. They lead by 10 and one more chance here to score before the end of the first half. Here's Jackson now, six seconds to go. Jackson trying to find an opportunity to shoot. Long rust dishes inside to Daniel. Back to Jackson at the buzzer, no good. Doesn't get off in time. And that's the end of a great first half of basketball. A round of applause from Doug Vieira as the team leaves the court. And O'Dowd sitting pretty at the moment here as we go to the half. It's Bishop O'Dowd 28, Campolindo 18. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back for the second half of action here on CIF North Coast TV. Yeah. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5 10. Touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40. Lucas Zinder with the game saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the and sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Oh. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. 
Touchdown, Helix! And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter sets under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners of KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near the goal No five-second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Geez. Augustine leads it 21 to already 20. lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons Running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21 17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchin in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity. Look for Wallace. No, they go Becker. Hayashi, then tap over in two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match. <laughs> Kathleen Wallace. No better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation taking Neil. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down the. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5 10. Touchdown, Wolverines! 
How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the and sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sac Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies. Back with you live on CIF North Coast TV. Stephen Davies, Harold Mills, T.C. Wardell. And James Davies, your broadcast crew from McKeon Pavilion on the campus of St. Mary's College in Moraga. Bishop O'Dowd currently enjoying a 28-18 lead over the Camp Lindo Cougars here at the moment. And Harold, it's been a, a case of Bishop O'Dowd dominating the paint there in the first quarter, or the first half of play, I should say. Yeah, definitely. They've been uh, going hard in the paint, as they will say, in the, in the pro leagues. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just height advantage. And, and uh, their athleticism, uh, Cabalino just can't compete with. And but Cabalino, using their effort, as you've seen, as we've seen in the beginning, their effort, effort can get you a long way. And they're fighting for every rebound, every loose ball, every shot. And they're fighting. I expect them to come out early with that same tempo they had in the first half. Try. They're only down by ten. Try to get this crowd back into it and try to make something happen. But Bishop O'Dowd just too athletic early. After the fans that have. Stay with our broadcast coverage all day. Don't forget, Salesian were down by 13, and they came back to win by seven in that opening game this morning here on CIF North Coast TV. So uh, a 10-point comeback is certainly not out of the realm of possibility, but Bishop O'Dowd will have other ideas, I'm sure. Here we go to the start of the third quarter of play. Bishop O'Dowd up 28-18. to 18. Here's Joshua Crum, right side, kicks it out to Marcus Green. Turnover now, and here come Campolindo with Griffin Pyatt leading the charge. Picks like it I, out. Like I said before, the half, they are coming out on fire, just like I expect them to. They have to. They have to play at 110% the rest of the way to get back in this game. Shot attempt there by Crumry, no good. There goes the presence in the paint there. They tried to go up on the inside and got blocked twice there. Yeah, they've got uh, Daniel and Longrus in the game right now for Bishop o O'Dowd. Crum, uh, Kendall Jackson, and Marcus Green completing the five on the court for the Dragons. We'll get to Camp Lindo in just a minute. Here's a spin move from Jack Evans. Floating jump shot, no good. Didn't even touch the eye in here. Bishop O'Dowd claimed the rebound with seven and a half minutes to go in this third quarter of play. Yeah, and Camp Lindo just coming out early, putting up shots. That shot probably could have waited a little bit longer to get a better open look. As you can imagine, Bishop O'Dowd not in much of a hurry here. Here's Jackson, three pull is good. Kendall Jackson draining his first points of the day. He'd yet to get on the score sheet until he sinks at three. And that is the perfect example of what I was just talking about, waiting for this shot to open. If the clock is not running down to 3-2-1, there is no reason to rush a shot. And that's the problem. Campolindo have had so few opportunities. They've had to rush their shots tonight, and that's the main reason why they're trailing by 13. The crowd were behind them early on, but even now, some of the fight taken out of this loud student section here on the campus of St. Mary's College in Moraga. Dow continuing with their smother and defense pressing them and fouled there. Yeah, even Rob Worth's best effort there to try and drive to the lane. He does get fouled, so he'll have the opportunity to shoot two. Worth at five points against Miramonte, which is one of two from the line, but was six to seven from the line against Drake. So one of the better three throw shooters here, step into the line 
for the Cougars. Six and a half minutes to go. His shot comes back off the backboard. And there's the crowd <laughs> getting back into the game. I mean, they erupted. It was, you only seen four players standing, four students standing up when it went in. Everybody stood up. And now everybody's <laughs> up. Yeah. There's the second from Rob Worth. So Campolindo cut the lead to 11. It's 31-20 now. O'Dowd in the lead with six and a half to go in the third quarter of play. Crum right side, dishes in the center, nobody home. Green there to mop up. Drives to the lane, gets it to drop. And does the point count? No, Don't the point does not count. No, it doesn't. You're right. So Green had a good look at that, got it to go. Said it's O'Dowd, ball. Here's Crum right side to Kendall Jackson now. Jackson, it's a long rush, three Wide ball, open. no good. And Rush is looking to not be good at a three-point shooter because Cavalino is leaving him wide open for it. Griffin Pyatt drives to the hoop, is fouled, and he will shoot two. Griffin Pyatt, nine points against Miramonte, three or four from the line. And this is a way for him to get back in the game. Take the fouls and convert the three throws. Let's see if Pyatt can do it. Here's the first one, yes, nothing but net. Have to take what they give you because <laughs> they're not giving you nothing. Uh, on the inside, so take these free throws and, and make them, and let's chip away at this score. Here's Pyatt's second, and it's there as well. Six minutes, 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. Campolindo slowly but surely eating into this dragon lead. It's now being trimmed to nine. Here's Long Russ left side, along the baseline now. Long Russ tried to dish it inside, turnover. Worth has it, and now kicked out to Griffin Pyatt at midcourt. Driving Bob along the. Hardy. <laughs> Quick transition here for Kendall Jackson as he goes to the hoop. And Long Rush <laughs> down there coming down the court quickly to come for the chase down with, a, with his fourth block of the night. Kendall Jackson was fouled there as he drove to the hoop, so now he will shoot two. Jackson with three points on the evening. First three throw is no good. He's shooting that free throw fast, has to take a breather there and slow it down a little bit. He'll be all right. And he will get an extra moment here as uh, Marcus Green comes out of the game. Replaced by Brendan Royal. Second free throw attempt coming up, and it is good from Kendall Jackson. So now the Campolindo Cougars trailing by 10. And the offensive architect here, Griffin Pyatt, setting the tone. Kicks it out left side, three ball, bounces off the rim, rebound. Long Russ kicks it out to Jackson now midcourt. Looking to O'Dowd here on the transition play. Layup no good. Rebound Campolindo. Pyatt has it now. Here they come down the court. Quick dish there inside. Reverse <laughs> layup no good. Just ran out of real estate on the court. O'Dowd have it. Rush down there showing some of that strength off big body down there. Ripping that ball away from the Campolindo defense. And you still can't fault uh, Campolindo's effort on offense as uh, Daniel goes up and over. Oh, Rob Worth. that is very, very, very questionable there. Looks like uh, Daniels there went over the back of the Cavalino player, but the ref called an elbow wow. on the Cavalino player. So I don't know, that's kind of questionable there. Difficult to see how a six foot seven player could throw an elbow being that high <laughs> off the ground, but there you go. It's Bishop O'Dowd, ball, crowd, as you can imagine, not impressed. Long rush to inbound the ball to Royal now, far side of the court. Royal for three, no one there, might as well have a shot. Can't come up with it, Crum there for the rebound, can't keep it inbounds. And Cavalino not getting any calls, any help from the rest. No, they're not. <laughs> so it looked to me that O'Dell was out of bounds when he tried to throw the ball back in, but the ref saw it's different. Justin Dunn into the game to replace Jordan Crumry. Uh, Pyatt's gonna take a seat as well as Matt McHugh comes in, so Euro down now up by 10. Here's Jackson to Crum. Crum right side, long rust, long two, no good. Rebound, Campolindo. He is, that's not his range, he has to get inside. Here's Matt McHugh. This is off to Worth, and that's almost intercepted by Jackson. It's a scramble forward, no doubt, come up with it. Bounce Way pass to, to Crum in the paint. And get it to go. Way to pay attention there by Kendall Jackson to put his hands up in there as the pass went off to get the steal. Great job. 
So Crum was fouled as he drove to the hoop. Four minutes and 40 seconds now to go in the third quarter. Campolino still within range. Down by 10, it's 32-22. Here's Joshua Crum at the line. Sinks the first. And great story that you were saying earlier about him, how he just stepped it up for his team. Uh, being in the championship run there last year, he knows what it takes, so what a way to be a leader. Yeah, and no shortage of leadership on this Dragons team. As he drains the second free throw. 12 point lead now for O'Dowd. Clock starting to go against Campolindo here with four and a half to go in the third. Here's Christian, dishes it out wide to Matt McHugh. Jump shot, no good. Rebound, Bishop O'Dowd. And oh. taking an elbow to the face there was, uh, was uh, Brandon Royal. That was actually a pretty good open shot, Chess. Did not fall in. It's kind of been the story for the of the weekend, the weekend. really. <laughs> in, in all six games we've covered, teams have had good looks, like Dia Valley yesterday, for instance, and just couldn't get them to go. Camp Lindo about a 12-foot shot there from the left side. Couldn't get it to fall. So four minutes, 23 seconds remaining in this third quarter of play. Dowd inbound the ball with Long Russ. And now Campolindo using the full court press for the first time. Jackson behind the pack Ooh. with the moves. Look at him go. Here's Kendall Jackson. That gets the O'Dowd fans fired up a little bit. Little shake a big action there from Kendall Jackson. Now to Long Russ left side. Long Russ one hand shot, no good. Rebound. Campolindo, as you said, kind of out of his element over on that side of the court. Yeah, he has to get deeper into the paint. Here's Campolindo oh, with a shot, shot off the glass. Excellent, excellent, excellent effort right there. Just what they needed from Jack Evans there. Sweet touch off the board. And now O'Dowd can't handle the pass. And that goes out of bounds. And Campolindo is starting to get back into this game. The fans are up on their feet again. And it's getting loud. And O'Dowd has to take a timeout. Yeah, Vieira not liking what he sees there. And he calls timeout. Three left now for both teams. Three minutes and 45 seconds to go in his third quarter of play. Hey, stay tuned for our post-game CIF North Coast TV show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIFNorthCoast.tv. And also catch the best, the best of North Coast section basketball on CIFNorthCoast.tv. You can watch a replay of today's game after each one concludes. Plus, check out our game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more. Or order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're, we're your home for the basketball championships here on the CIF North TV. I threw a curveball for you on the <laughs> ad there, Harold. Nicely yeah. done. And a quick programming note, we will be with you for the regional and the state championships on KBCSports.com, providing live audio of all the regional and state basketball championships. Harold and I, hopefully TC and James will be there as well. It'll be epic. You don't want to miss it. Three minutes and 45 seconds to go in this third quarter of play. A 10-point lead now. Dowd, but Campolindo slowly but surely clawing their way back into this game. After getting Jack Evans's layup off the glass to give him two much needed points, they've trimmed this lead to 10. Now, what can Campolindo do on this offensive possession? Campolindo still very much in this game. There you go. And there it is. It's, <laughs> they are in this to win it. They are definitely gaming today and playing hard, as I said earlier, getting back to that physical play they was playing earlier. Matt McHugh giving up the body, gets it to go, and one coming up. And Palindo tri uh, trim the lead to eight, pending the three throw coming up from McHugh. He was seven of 11 from the line in that game against Miramonte. His shot will go off, high off the board and in. Wow, bounced off the back of the iron, went about three feet up in the air and then dropped in through the basket. Seven points now, the deficit. And Jackson dispossessed, Long Russ is right there, luckily to mop up. Full court pressure, working well for Campolindo at the moment, but wait a minute, <laughs> hold on, that Ivan Rabb. <laughs> that's the freshman Ivan Rabb there, putting a statement on that dunk. And he stepped. Campolindo trying to drive along the baseline there, Justin Dunn. Drive to the hoop and a foul against Rabb. No doubt has had so much height on their team. Just dunk, we've seen a lot of dunks here <laughs> earlier. It's a couple of alley-oops, and this height is just such an advantage for them. 
No real foul trouble at the moment. Just 14 fouls for O'Dowd, six for Campolindo. Here's a chance now for Christian. Three ball is in there. That gets the crowd on their feet. Six point lead now for O'Dowd with two minutes and 56 seconds to go. Gotta love the fight in Capolindo. Gotta love this fight in Capolindo. They have an A plus for effort this entire game. They have not given up for a second. Here's Gomez now, left side, driving to the lane, gets it to float. And Gomez has five points on the day, a crucial three in that first half, and now gets the floating shot to go. And his points have been crucial for Odell. Yeah, everybody contributing. But Dominic Gomes in particular has had five useful points off the bench for Odell. Eight points now the advantage for the Dragons. They're up 38 to 30 with 234 to go in the third. Capilindo is definitely surprising me right now. They came out on fire and they are fighting. I love seeing this. And the full court press, and of course the 110% effort that we've seen all through this game. It's certainly keeping a minute here with two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter of play. Yeah, trying to keep it close here. Uh, don't want the game to be too out of hand come fourth quarter, because fourth quarter is gonna be crunch time. And they can keep this game within the six, eight, down six to eight range by the fourth quarter, I think they can make a run and we can have an exciting finish here. What do you think would be the key to the, making that kind of run though? Just the physical play, it's just you gotta hit your open opportunities. When you're open, the shots have to fall. They begin a lot of shots that have been going in and out and free throws, you have to make your free throws. You think back to that Salesian St. Mary's game at the beginning of the day, Mariah Moore, two, three points from distance really changed the game. Will something like that happen here for Campolindo? We'll have to wait and see. Two minutes and 34 seconds to go in this third quarter of play. O'Dowd to, in ball, or to inbound the ball from the near side of the court. And it's Long Russ to do the duties. Now, Kendall Jackson in possession, being hounded by Christine here. Dishes out to Crum, right side. Pyatt's in there. Fouled him, it'll be. A personal foul against Griffin Pyatt, so Crum will go one and one. One and one, and Griffin Pyatt is a player that Capilino needs to really uh, start putting some numbers in here for them. Yeah. He is the uh, player of the year for their conference, and he's been kind of quiet here. He has just three points on the night for number three. Your Campolindo now. Free throw no good, rebound by Campolindo, and a turnover now. Kendall Jackson, look at him go, driving, dishing it off to Long Russ inside, back to, uh, to Ivan Rab. He can't get it to go. Ivan Rabb being pretty, pretty, uh, pretty sensational here for a, such a youngster. Uh, many more years out of him to come and uh, looking forward to, to hearing a lot about him in the future. Yeah, and you can imagine he'll be, uh, he'll be a star to come. Six, seven and a freshman. Fill him out a little bit. You might be talking about a guy that's seven foot by the time he's a senior. Man. Now let's see if he has a sweet touch from the line. He's up, the Dragon's up by eight and a lot of sound in the house at the moment. Here's Rab's free throw, no chance. I've seen it coming out of his hands too hard. He's a big guy and the yep. big guys always have problems with the free throw, something he can work on. And as TC Wardell said earlier on in a exactly. broadcast, it's rare to see a big guy with touch. <laughs> and well, Ivan Rab may need to work on that a little bit in the off season. Here's his second free throw of the day with the crowd noise reverberating yeah, nice through touch. his mind. It goes in and O'Dowd now have a nine point lead. Cavalino has to keep this score down until the 8-6, down by 6-8 here in the fourth quarter. And I have a feeling that Cavalino in the fourth quarter is going to come out with another explosive run. And let's see if they can just capitalize. Here's Christian trying to drive to the lane. It's dispossessed. So foul against O'Dowd. That's just their fifth team foul of the half with a minute and 56 seconds to go. They have a nine-point lead, but Cavalino Inbound the ball far side. Now, what can they do with a full shot clock here? Pass inside. Excellent ball movement. And unlucky there that that didn't go. That was a great effort there from Excellent. Justin Dunn. Excellent ball movement. O'Reilly's original attempt went off the backboard no good, and then Dunn was there to mop up. He gets fouled, and he'll shoot two. Here's the first one off the front of the rim, no good. And as TC pointed out to us, Odell only has eight points in this quarter. And that's keeping Capolindo in this game. 
Yeah. It's not like in the previous game we saw against Miramonte where O'Dowd just ran away with it in the third quarter of play. Second three throw, no good. And now a little contact there. Now, did he just accidentally elbow the ref right he now? He did. <laughs> oh, okay. And that's he why the, the crowd got so <laughs> fired up. And he probably thought the Capilino player was still on him after yeah, his turn. I don't think it was intentional by no. any means, but... Campolindo now. And I think the ref just missed the over and back call just right now. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe making up for that uh, elbow, fans an elbow thrown earlier yeah, by, by Terrence Daniel. And that's what I'm thinking. But now the sloppy play costs Campolindo that and offensive this is possession. Something they cannot do. This is something they cannot do. Yeah, missing three throws and turning over possession easily will potentially come back to haunt them now. A minute and a half to go in the third quarter of play. Gomez feeds the ball aside. Quick dish there from Longrus inside to Daniels. Dispossessed, strip. In fact, by Christian, but he's right there to claim it. Cavalindo is just fighting for everything. They closed down so quickly on number four, Terrence Daniel. They was able to strip the ball, but just couldn't get it back. As Terrence Daniel has fighting him, was able to get the ball right back. Daniel Fowl will step to the line here. Ninth team foul for Campolindo. Daniels, shot goes. Rolls around the rim. O'Dowd now a 10 point lead, up 40 to 30. That's Daniels' seventh point of the game. Crum has seven, Daniel has seven, Longrest has six, Jackson four, and Gomez five. Five plays out on the court right now for Bishop O'Dowd. Second one doesn't go. McHugh brings it down court. Kicks it out wide. Two ball goes. Excellent shot. That's Victor Walther getting on the board there for, or uh, excuse me, John Schmitz getting on the board there for Campolindo now. Quick transition play from O'Dowd. That doesn't go from Daniel. Rebound Campolindo. 56 seconds to go. Eight points to difference here. Campolindo driving. Shot no good. Had the same similar shot, just couldn't get enough power on it. Yep. Bishop O'Dowd wastes no time bringing the ball down the court. Crumb shot doesn't go, however, and a rebound for Campolindo. Bishop now O'Dowd playing too fast, not being able to get the shots to drop. It's true. Campolindo oh, playing at 110%, but O'Dowd for some reason feel like they need to match him up by 10. But and another block shot for Langrush down there. I think I believe that's his sixth one of the day. Jackson directs traffic. Now they'll slow it down. 23 seconds to go. In this third quarter, here's a... Man, there you go. Daniel, a little assistance off the glass. 10 points now, the advantage. Now, Campolindo really need to drain a field goal here before the end of this third quarter of play. Trailing by 10. Here's McHugh, dishes it out wide to Schmitz. For three with someone in his face, can't get it to go. Rebound is <laughs> swatted away by Longrust, and that'll end the third quarter of play. He's always creeping somewhere down there in the paint. You're going to put it up. Know that he is somewhere in the area. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, eight minutes of action remaining in this Division Three Boys Championship game here on CIF North Coast TV. Bishop O'Dowd 42, Campolindo 32, Harold Mills. You can watch highlights or replay of today's game in our on-demand section. You can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFNorthCoast.tv. Click on buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIFNorthCoast.tv. Thank you, sir. The Camp Lindo Cougars cheerleaders doing their best to get the crowd fired up here for this final eight minutes of action on CIF North Coast Star TV. We thank our audience for joining us this weekend. It's been a fabulous weekend. We look forward to seeing you for the regional and state basketball championship coverage on KBC Sports. Dot com, our partner network here on the Play On Sports Network. Once again, the broadcast crew on CIF North Coast TV: Stephen Davies, Harold Mills, T.C. Wardell, and James Davies. Eight minutes to go. Crowd getting loud here for Campolindo as the team goes over their duties here for this final eight minutes of play. Bishop O'Dowd a ten-point lead, a little bit out of that range that you were looking for, Harold. Yeah. To keep this one close. Definitely, but it it is only ten points and just. You know, just little things that can fall through for Capilindo here, and they'll be right back in this game. They can get be able to knock this score, uh, lead down to five within the first, you know, three, four minutes of this game. I think they have a chance. Campolindo's out. A sloppy play. And yeah, just a little bit. 
Daniel's shot doesn't go rebound by. And sloppy play from Odell like that are opportunities that Capilino must capitalize on. Here's uh, Isaac Christie in possession to Griffin Pyatt. Pyatt driving to the baseline. Floating shot comes off the back of the backboard. No good. And Pyatt's just been really, really quiet there. I mean, he is the uh, MVP of the league and um, just, has, has, just hasn't had a, a game going his way today. Nothing yeah. really falling for him. He hasn't really shown up, and they're going to need him here in this stretch. Yeah, they absolutely are. He's got three fouls and just three points in the game so far for number three. And look at Bishop O'Dowd. Here they come on transition. Look at this going for the slam. There was Daniel. He couldn't get excellent, the handle. Excellent defense. That is just the scrap in uh, Cavalindo. They are really, really fighting. They need to feed off the energy of this crowd. They've got to get them involved here if they can. Here's Schmitz to Pyatt, back to Schmitz. Has O'Reilly support, three ball, no good. Almost. Rebound O'Dowd, and it was close. And that could have been big, would have been big. It's still a 10 point lead, O'Dowd just 12 points now in the second half of play. So certainly not running away with this by any, by any means. And Cavalino must find a way to get it going. Now, O'Dowd are really gonna slow things down. This is a molasses-like tempo here from O'Dowd at the moment. Jackson working against Christian here. It's one way and then another. Drives to the lane. Floats up the shot. Doesn't go. <laughs> Campo fans chant, you can't do that. It is Campbell in the ball now with six minutes and 20 seconds to go in this final quarter of action. Looks like Long Rush just came back into the game. They're trying to get their big man back in the post here, trying to get some score on the inside of the paint here. As you said, on the visual, that only 12 points this half. So here come Campolindo now with John Smith in possession at the moment. Wants Christian to go out to his right. Has Pyatt over there on his left. Jump shot, no good. Rebound by Christian, gets it to go, and one. There you go. And that'll get the crowd back into it. Yes, it will, and Isaac Christian perfectly placed for the rebound, puts it in and draws the foul as well. Seventh foul for Bishop O'Dowd, Campolindo have nine. It's just eight points now, the gap. And here's Isaac Christian to the line. No good, long rust with the rebound. Have to make those, have to make those. Gotta make them, they've missed too many three throws in the second half. Now, here's Long Russ sending it down court. Here's Kendall Jackson. Four points on the day for number 10. Sixteen on the shot clock now. Long Russ dishes inside. Daniel Dewey. reverse spin and in there. And that's what Odell has to do. Once they're just right up under the net, there's nothing you can do about that. As easy as you like from Terrence Daniel. Ten points now the gap. Here's a kick out to Christian. Three ball off the front of the rim. Long Russ right there for the rebound. Kendall Jackson now in possession. Campolino stick with the full court press. And good passing here by O'Dowd off the glass. Long Russ no good for the rebound by Marcus Green. Can't get it to go but Long Russ fouled in the process and he'll now step to the line. A couple of three throws converted here by Long Russ. The 10th foul by, or 10th team foul by Campolindo. Misses the first one. Bishop Dow <laughs> giving Campolindo every reason to, to stay in the game, missing free throws and opportunities like this. I was about to say, if those two three throws went for O'Dowd, it would really put Campolindo under some pressure, but Bishop O'Dowd missed both. Quick pass there from O'Reilly, looking for Christian in the paint. A little bit too hard, but. O'Dell has been playing pretty sloppy basketball here this whole game. Yeah, it's like we were talking with TC at halftime, and this is the, almost the polar opposite from the girls' game. They were so precise. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the play was out of this world at times. No doubt could perhaps learn a few lessons from the exactly. from Malik McCord <laughs> exactly. and the way that the, the girls' team played in particular, especially if they're going to make some noise at the state Stay championship yeah. level here later on in the month. Well, Dow's a good team, and they are uh, the number one team, and they have a lot of talent, but they're going to need a lot more discipline and a lot more better ball control in the state championship if they plan on going far there. Five minutes and 14 seconds remaining 
in the fourth quarter. Campolindo not going away, but then again, Bishop O'Dowd aren't exactly running away with things either. Exactly, and as long as Bishop O'Dowd keeps playing and with the turnovers and everything, Campolindo will still be in this game, only down by 10, five minutes left. There's plenty of time left in this game if Campolindo can start getting some falls, some uh, shots to drop. That's really about, that's really the, the, the difference between the teams so far. It, it, on, when you t call the games in terms of effort, it's, it's clearly in favor of Campolindo. But when you've got such a, a height advantage inside, it certainly favors O'Dowd. But as we mentioned, still five minutes and 14 seconds to go here in this fourth quarter of play. Still plenty of time. But Campolindo needs to get the shots to fall, beginning right now with this inbounds. As Evans has it, finds a, an open Pyatt that far side. Pyatt's jump shot goes. There you go, need, Griffin they need, Pyatt. They need their leader. They need their man to step up for them here in this last stretch here in five minutes in the fourth. Five points for Griffin Pyatt on the day. Spinning in his long rust. He's got <laughs> other ideas. Great play inside there from Richard Longrus. And he's got ten points on the day now. Here come Campolindo. Christine almost lost the handle on that one. Driving along the baseline. Great bounce pass across. Three ball is up and off the rim. Unlucky. Rebound by Daniel. Long rust now in possession. Sends it down court to Daniel. It was around Pyatt. Bounce pass there to Marcus Green. Goes. And the fans here are upset. Should have been called a travel. And I think so too. But great spin move from him. And to put the ball in. And as Capilindo is starting to play with too much of a rush now. And Odell shot starting to fall. And four minutes left. And I just don't know how this one is going to turn out for Capilindo here. Yes, time certainly not in favor of the Cougars now as they face a 12-point deficit. A trail by as much as 13 in this game. And now, Brandon Royal will step to the line. He'll shoot two here. Pyatt and Christian both with three fouls right now for Campolindo. Here's the first three throw from Brendan Royal, the senior guard. Yeah, and you can see it in the student section here in the fans on the side that we're sitting on from Capilino. People got their hands on their head and I, I was just about to say. Kind of a disappointing run here. You come, you know, you, they played hard all season to come here and, you know, lose a game in this fashion, but Odell chess, basically chess too athletic for uh, Capilino. Here's McHugh, three ball is well short. Unfortunate there, but Campolindo keep it alive. Second effort now. Chance driving to the hoop is Evans off the front iron. No good. Rebound Bishop O'Dowd. Four minutes to go now in this one. Send it down court quickly to Marcus Green. Back to Royal. Long rust lurking at the three throw line. Here he is. As McHugh tried to strip him there, it's going to be Campolindo ball. Long rust not impressed at all. Substitution now for O'Dowd as Kendall Jackson back in the game as Marcus Green takes a seat. Three minutes and 49 seconds to go, but O'Dowd currently with their biggest lead of the game so far, up 50 to 36 here with 3.45 to go. Campolindo now with Pyatt, the leader, shooting, jump shot, no good. Just out Pyatt of sorts. still continues to struggle. He has some shots falling and some shots not falling, but he has struggled all games. Yes, he has. In the meantime, O'Dowd driving back down the court, turnover. John Schmitz in possession at the moment, sends it to McHugh, took his eye off the ball momentarily, and Brandon Royal could have been right there for the steal. Yeah, Pyatt's had good looks tonight. Yeah, he has a lot of good looks, and he just, just has the wrong night to just not be on your game tonight. Yeah. I mean, he's an excellent player. Uh, as you said, you know, no, he's just an excellent athlete, but you know, just tonight was not his night. McHugh to shoot from the line. Here's his first. Goes in and out. And that doesn't help matters for the Cougars now with three and a half minutes to go. Trailing by 14. Long rust across the Royal with McHugh all over him. A foul there by Matt McHugh. He'll go for two shots. Yes, he will. And hands remain firmly planted on the heads of the Campolino supporters here in the student section. Royal to shoot two here with three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Royal's first is off the front of the eye and no good. 
Royal with four points on the evening. Daniel, the leading scorer for Bishop O'Dow with 11. Here's the second attempt from Royal, no good. Rebound Griffin Pyatt, and he'll bring the ball down the court here with 3.17 to go. Pyatt Look driving Pyatt. to the hole, there you go. And Pyatt trying to get some type of rally here, trying to come back, but I fear it's just a little bit too late for Cavalino. Seven points now for Pyatt. Long Russ brings the ball down, distributes it nicely. The goal, oh. alley hoop, it goes <laughs> from Daniel. A little chest, a little high at Daniel's reach, but <laughs> was able to complete the alley hoop. So gets it to go though. Evans, great moves, shoots off the front of the rim, no good, and hit too hard there by McHugh, trying to get it back to either Evans or Worth. The hit between both players, they couldn't come up with it. Two minutes and 47 seconds to go. Still a 14 point lead enjoyed by the Dragons. Here's Gomez now, working. Oh, great, behind the back move, trying to go to the hoop. Play we've been seeing out of Gomez all day. He is not scared to get in there as some of the uh, Cavalindo fans are starting to file out of here. Yeah, certainly some... Uh, and Odell fans, and trying to beat the traffic out of here, really. Yeah, <laughs> well... As it will be cloud, it will be cluttered in, on the way out. It is a shame for the Cavalindo fans here as they trail by 14 with uh, 2 minutes and 43 seconds remaining in this game. And, and Odell, yeah, you're right, Harold. The stands are empty in here yeah. with the quickness. And Odell getting ready to go back to celebrate a women and men's championship. And just a great uh, time to be an official Dow Dragon right now. Yeah, and for the, Lam uh, for the Lamarinda fans, they've taken some lumps today as Miramonte got blown out by the Dragons earlier on. And now the boys team of Camp Lindo may suffer s a similar fate here at the hands of the Bishop O'Dowd Dragons. But and just the difference I've seen in both games with the men's and women's of Bishop O'Dowd is they're at they have athletes. They have some serious athletes on, the on there on both teams, especially the women team with just young players who just play like that. It's just, I'm, I'm still in awe about the play of the women's team for Odell. I think it says a lot when T.C. Wardell says he's one of the best women's basketball yeah. teams he's seen, <laughs> considering the uh, the amount of coverage he's done for KBC Sports and now play on sports as well. That says a lot about Odell, and it'll be interesting to see their progression here as we move into regional championships. In the meantime, Gomez is at the line. Here's his first one. He gets it to go, and Gomez... <laughs> Now with six points on the day, gets the congratulations of both Crum and Jackson. And the crowd here uh, uh, mocking uh, Gomes here, calling him Justin Bieber here, trying to throw him out of his game. <laughs> Not the first time there's been a Justin Bieber reference this weekend here at uh, McKean Pavilion. Here for a three-ball attempt as well, short. Hits the front of the iron. Two and a half minutes to go now. 15 point lead for O'Dowd. Campolino to inbound the ball. Quick jump shot there. Doesn't go. Rebound. Long Russ kicks it to Jackson. Jackson now goes around McHugh. Got blown out there. Here's Gomez. Thought about the three ball. Gives it back to Jackson instead. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go now. Here's Jackson with the moves. Fouled by Jack Evans. And as we get down here in two minutes and 17 seconds left in the fourth quarter, um, you know, for player of the game, we have kind of, you know, a couple of players that we can consider. Well, who, who, what do you think, uh, Steve? Well, I don't know. I haven't really had much of a chance to think <laughs> about that. For, but let me think about that for a minute. It's Candle's first uh, three throw misses. Gomez comes out and he gets a round of applause from the coach and staff. He's had a useful day off the bench for Bishop O'Dowd. Two minutes and 17 seconds to go. Here in this one, O'Dowd up by 15. Jackson's second three throw is good. And O'Dowd now a 16 point lead. Campolindo not giving up, and here's Griffin Pyatt now. Trying to the hole, but rejected by Long Russ. Well, well, I have an idea of who my player, to, <laughs> player well, of the game is. It may be in the player that just swatted the ball out of the hands <laughs> yeah, of Griffin has Pyatt. He's got at least, at least seven or eight block shots in the paint. He's just been dominant down there defensively and on the boards all game for Bishop O'Dell. Look at the difficulty that uh, Campolindo had inbound the ball with long rest, putting those long arms to good use. Now a three ball attempt by Jack Evans goes. And Evans now has seven points on the day. Perhaps just a little bit too late for Campolindo. McHugh fouls Crum. 
and he'll step to the line. Yeah, just going back to a long rush, just his dominance down there in the paint uh, for a board on boards, offensively and defensively, and his block shots. Uh, he's had he's one of the Dragons who have had a terrific game tonight. Yeah, long rush. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, a four-year varsity player, I believe a three-year varsity starter, and really the leader of the team. We, we touched on this a bit earlier. Uh, second three throw, no good. But look at uh, Crow hustling for the rebound. Excellent. And it comes off the foot of Griffin Pyatt out of bounds. Excellent, excellent play. But what I was about to say is with, with the void created by Brandon Ashley leaving to Finley Prep, it required someone to step up big time in the leadership role for O'Dowd. And uh, Richard Longrus, as uh, Carlos Ariaga mentioned to us a little bit earlier on, was the player to fill that void. And he has been impressive tonight, to say the least, in this North Coast section Division Three Championship game. Now, Campolino still not giving up. Great oh. jump shot. Turn. That was good. <laughs> Spinning and feeding away Jack Evans. That's his ninth point of the day. And Evans has had a fine game here. And there goes. Two plus the hard. Yes, sir. Ivan Rab inside he gets it to go. He's got nine points on the day. Nine points for a young player. He is going to be incredible. Kind of reminiscent of when we saw Brandon Ashley and his breakout game against Castro Valley a couple years back. He was a 6'9 freshman. And I think uh, Michael Smith, uh, come, or our uh, colleague here on Play on Sports, three ball no good. Had already dubbed him NBA at that point. So may we see another player like him in Ivan Rab in the years to come. We'll have to wait and see. Minute seven seconds to go here, no doubt up by 13. No doubt now just spreading the ball around as um, Mike Texada in the game that drives along the baseline. The foul against No Doubt, and it will be Campolindo ball. Campolindo, a lot to learn from this game as they get ready for the for the uh, state run. And um, are they Aaron? They are in the state. Challenges, I believe, right? Well, they'll move, yeah, they'll move on to the regionals, regionals then they'll be yeah. deciding the state. But what are some of the things you think they can learn from this game that they can translate into? Uh, they have to they have success. to make the best of their opportunities. They <laughs> has that uh, ball sent into the third row of the stands there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Victor Walter there and, uh, and Ivan Rab, 6'5 and 6'7 between them. <laughs> and, but, uh, I'm sorry to break you off there, Harold. Uh, but um, Kevin Lewis just has to just seize their opportunities. Uh, Ooh. And that was a hard shot took in there. But good sportsmanship as the O'Dow player helped him up. But uh, Cavalino just has to seize their opportunities. They had a lot of opportunities here tonight to, you know, drop some of the free throws and some open looks that just did not go in. And I believe if uh, some of those shots would have went in, this, this game could be a whole lot different right now. We could be all on the edge of our seats right now. Griffin Pyatt fouled by Victor Davis. So he'll step to the line and his three throw kind of. And that's another. A big point. Uh, Griffin Pyatt is a big reason why they're here, and he has to definitely step up. 40 seconds to go. It's the Kendall Jackson show here. Look at the crisp moves here. Wow, Jackson putting on the <laughs> putting on quite the show here for the fans, and he finally gets dispossessed. And that's the biggest cheer of the night from the Campolindo fans <laughs> still in attendance. Kendall Jackson <laughs> overcooking matters a little bit. And that gets one final big cheer from the student section. <laughs> and those that have stuck around deserve something from this game. Yeah. Uh, Cavalino definitely has some loyal, loyal fans. And even at, I remember playing back at Cavalino when I played for San Leandro High School, uh, their fans are just loyal. They got loud in the football stadium back then in the 2003-2004 season. And yeah, and that's just something they've had. Well, we were there when Cavalino won the Division II football crown. And their fans were absolutely incredible that night, staying long after the game had concluded to congratulate the football team and the entire coaching staff on their success. And unfortunately, the same North Coast Section Championship will elude them tonight. Jackson's three throw will go off the rim. Rebound by Campolindos. They now have some of their uh, second stringers in the game here at the moment, giving them a chance on the big stage. Here's a three ball attempt, no good. Rebound attempt, can't go either. 13 seconds to go. And now Bishop O'Dowd will just have to hang on. You get the feeling that we won't be seeing any uh, special moves here from Jackson. And they'll just <laughs> let the clock tick down. But Bishop O'Dowd 
have won the North Coast Section Championship. They are the Boys Division Three champions with a 56 to 43 victory over Camp Alendo here at McKeon Pavilion in Moraga. Oh man, what a great weekend of basketball this has been. Uh, very, very, some, some good games. We've seen a lot of great talent. Oh yes. Uh, from Jabari Bird to the Bishop O'Dell females team to De La Salle. Um, just a lot of great, great talent and I'm looking forward to the continued coverage of these championship series. Needless to say, all of us here at Play on Sports and CIF Northcoast.tv can't wait for regionals to begin on Wednesday. We shall see you in a couple of weeks' time for the regional championships at Power Balance Pavilion in Sacramento. We'll be right back to wrap up this game in just a few moments here on CIF Northcoast.tv. Fourth and ten from the 41-yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs. And Jordan Lertik will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attacked there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner. Oh. It's the over, the over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick Air wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with a jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way. As he's at the 10-5, touchdown! Patrick Zeller. Got North Coast TV, a comprehensive victory at the end of the day for the Bishop O'Dowd Dragons, defeating a really, well, what can you say, an energetic and a team that never gave up in Campolindo, really yeah. hustling for every ball tonight. Yeah, as TC pointed out, Campolindo's just that blue collar type of team that was just fight for everything that, that they won. And just great effort. You can't take nothing away from Cabalindo. They are a good team. They're fundamentally sound. Says Odell, too athletic and too big on the inside. And that's the, that may unfortunately be the Achilles steel for, uh, for Cabalindo going down the, as we move into regionals here, they almost surely will be assured a place in, in the regional basketball champions. But that, that lack of a real inside presence, I think is gonna, is gonna hurt them down the stretch. Yeah, they're a small team and they, they uh, live and die on the outside three point shots. And if those shots ain't falling for them, it's a long night for them. In the meantime, our player of the game has to go to one player for Bishop O'Dowd. And he really stepped up, especially on, in the defensive page tonight, was Richard Longrush. Yeah, Longrush is <laughs> just a, uh, an insane number amount of blocks, boards, I mean, he had, I believe he may have had a double-double just on blocks and boards alone. <laughs> and then just his points added in. Uh, he played great tonight defensively for them, and great job. And where perhaps the, the Bishop O'Dowd on offense weren't as, uh, weren't as clutch and as pristine as they perhaps would have liked, they certainly made up for it on defense, and they gave Griffin Pyatt and the rest of the Cougars a very difficult time out there this evening. Yeah, their defense, Bishop O'Dowd defense was just great tonight, and uh, really picked up the slack for the lack of offense they had put out tonight. So we're going to go down and grab an interview here with uh, with Richard Longrust. So 
that will you'll have to check out the interview on uh, on our website because unfortunately we won't be able to transmit it to you live but we'd like to say thanks to everybody for joining us this weekend uh, it's been an excellent weekend of basketball here at St. Mary's College in Moraga for all of us here at Play on Sports and CIF North Coast TV our cameraman James Davies TC Wardell Harold Mills and myself Stephen Davies thank you for joining us we appreciate it we look forward to seeing you in two weeks time from Power Balance Pavilion in Sacramento for the regional basketball finals on your home for high school sports, play on sports, CIF, North Coast TV, and of course, kbcsports.com. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye for now.